Hi. Good evening. Welcome to a live on YouTube. I am going to show you guys how to make the pocket envelope. I have the download in the description below. And it looks like this. It's a JPEG, so you can either print it or not, depending on whether you feel like doing that or not. I am going to use, here, let me show you some finished ones. Aren't those cute? And it's got the little pocket right in there like that. Uh, I heard that people were using these for like cash tips or you could put notes in them or um, maybe a little letter and mail it to somebody. I think that would be really sweet to get in the mail. And then I think what I'm going to do is um, here's my year calendar and I'm actually hand drawing it. So every day I'm, I'm drawing a picture on it. I haven't done today's yet. I was going to wait until after this live. And then I thought maybe I'd put that little envelope in here somewhere like here. And just like tape it in there and then put something in there or something like that. I'm going to use one of my birthday downloads that I've been creating for the last year. Um, this is what the January one, this is the old January one. It looks like this. And I redid the colors. Um, but here's my, this one I'm going to use for the demo tonight. And so I followed the directions. Um, I measured a two and a half inch by 10 inch rectangle. And the directions say you want to do four times the width. So I did a little math. And if you want to make a smaller one, you'd want to do a two inch by eight inch. And if you want a larger one, you'd want to do a three inch by 12 inch. So I measured it out already in the pencil. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm just going to cut it out. And as I'm doing that, I was going to give you guys a puppy update. So some of you may know that our family adopted two puppies three weeks ago. We've had them three weeks now. And their names are Bear and Star. And they're a bonded uh, litter pair, a brother and a sister. And it's been quite the adjustment to get used to them being around with feedings and letting them outside to go potty and all of that stuff. And um, they're outside right now after a little bit of an early dinner. And it's getting dark, so um, I might later just let them in to the kitchen, um, and then you guys can see how exuberant they are. Okay, now I got to check my measurement. What did I do here? Okay. Hello to all of you there. <laughs> I'm not watching the chat. Um, I tried to do the chat while I'm trying to demo before, and I it makes my brain hurt. So if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll probably check them in a little bit. But I just wanna be free flowing with this. Um, show you how to do this and then just chat a little bit. And if you've got another project you're working on, awesome. Okay, so there we go. There's our two and a half by 10 inch rectangle. Okay, so now we're gonna fold it in half with the design on the outside. We're gonna make four segments. And I did not cut this very well. Hang on a second. It's not even, let me try this again. See what I did? So I'm gonna cut that, make it even. I noticed uh, when I did the demo, uh, the paper that was sent to me, it wasn't, it wasn't cut quite right. Okay, so now we're going to do an accordion fold. So I'm going to take this side. I'll show it when I'm done. So you kind of go in, out, in, out. And we're going to make that accordion fold. And then I'm going to do it on the fourth segment. So now you'll have four segments. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then 
Okay, we want our design on the inside, okay? And now we're gonna open up the paper and with the pattern side down, fold down the top right edge. Okay, so for me, that's over here. So I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make like a rectangle fold and I'll show you. So I'm gonna line it up on the, the folded edge. Okay, and then fold down the top right. Okay, so now my, oh, I did it the wrong way. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I have to have it. Okay, I gotta do it on the other side because we want the, we want the design to show, not the back. Okay, all right, so there we go. Have your back up and then fold like that. Okay. And then we're going to do it on, that was segment four. And then we're going to do another triangle on page two. Okay. So with this side up, you're the wrong side up, you're going to go to segment two and do a diagonal fold. And I'm just going to line it up on the, on the crease there. <clears throat> Okay, so then it'll look like that. Okay, and now we're going to fold page one and two along the diagonal line. So that means like this. So now you've got one and three showing. Don't listen to me. That's not right. <laughs> It'll be easier if you look at the at the directions yourself because I'm now I'm confusing myself. And then I'm going to fold up one to two. Okay, I did that. All right. And now I'm going to fold page one and two to the right. Okay. One and two to the right. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. So now that triangle will become the front like that. Now we're going to fold page four to the left and tuck it inside the pocket. Oh, okay. So we're going to go like this. I'm going to tuck it inside there. Okay. Oh, that was easy and it's done. Ta -da! And again, I'm going to trim I don't know if I'm wrecking the integrity. Oh, I sure did. I cut my I cut my fold, so that was stupid. So don't do that. <laughs> don't cut that. I guess I need to be better at, at folding it. But anyway, you get the idea. How cute is that? I'll just tape it. And then you can slip something sweet in there for somebody. Hey. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to give credit to the Puget Sound Book Artists Group, which is uh, a, a handmade art book group that I belong to here in Washington State. And um, I have their apron on. They sent this to me through the mail for, you know, our annual membership. And they got it from Alyssa Golden's Making Handmade Books. 100 plus bindings, which is linked in the description. Not, her book's not linked, but my blog post with this copy is linked below. And you could probably just look up her, her book and find it probably anywhere. Um, I'm going to definitely look at her book and see. I think it would be fun to see what other fun paper projects we can make really easily for other people. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Um, what I'm working on. Oh, so you guys know that I, if you're, if you are subscribed to my newsletter, um, I've been letting you know about my Irish calendar book that I made, by the way, with, um, I made two of them. One of them, I did a swap with my, my book arts group. And the other one is sitting in here 
waiting to get finished. I didn't, I didn't bind it yet. And I have to look back at pictures to see what the heck I did <laughs> the first time. Cause now it's been a couple years and the pandemic happened and I don't remember everything. Um, but anyway, so I have some Irish heritage and I was really interested in learn. I was actually learning uh, Irish, the Celtic language on Duolingo. And I can't get past a certain point. And I don't know if it's because my brain can't seem to remember things. But I decided to research um, the Irish calendar because I, I like to know um, like month dates and other languages and stuff. And the Irish calendar starts with the month of November. And November is called Samhain. We call it Samhain in the United States. Um, but this was what I started the calendar with. It was like a dead tree with the moon because it's autumn time. And of course, Samhain happens exactly the day right after Halloween, right? So that's why that word gets associated with like horror movies and stuff over here in the United States. So anyway, okay, for November, I, I did the tree and the moon. And then for December, which some of you have probably seen from my newsletter, I did the snowflake. And so I did the, I duplicated, uh, I didn't do exactly the same snowflake, but I did a different snowflake. And so that's what shows up on um, the birthday downloads that I'm making. And anyway, here is, oh, I don't even know how to say December. See, Nanolia. And I butchered that. Call me out. Yenair is January. So here we are in January, New Year for us in the Western Hemisphere. Um, maybe not following the Irish calendar, but most of the for most of us, January starts the new year. And so I thought a star would be nice. And I'm just gonna go into the next one is February. Fabar. And I didn't say that right either, but then I did a little heart. So basically. That's a little glimpse of all the months I did. And they're all here, but now I got to figure out how to bind them together. Um, I was thinking about doing it a little different than I, than I did the first one. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you because this has been a huge project. So I've got all those months and I made a calendar and now I'm just going to, you know, I'm going down a rabbit hole with, making all these birthday downloads and stuff and I'm having a lot of fun and it's I'm really slow at it but that's okay I'm working full time and taking care of family and puppies now and so I'm getting it done when I can um I'm gonna see if I can see anybody's comments I see some likes and I say thank you for that I don't know how to check if I have comments I don't know Anyway, so I'll just keep chatting. And if you're working on something, just hang out with me. Um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to tell you about my hat. So my dad passed away in um, April of 21. And <clears throat> he was an avid fisherman. And my mother made this logo for his little fly tying business, Jay's Flies, using a um, hook, fishing hook. And then this is a embroidery of one of the flies that he created called, I think this was the Jay Tuca. Anyway, my brother had these made for all of us. And so this hat is pretty special because it's got everybody's creativity in it. So I thought I'd wear it for you tonight. Anyway, isn't that fun? <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I know what. I wanted to show you guys some of my journals and stuff, right? So um, part of the reason I wanted to show you how to make a fun, cute thing is because uh, I love to do my own <clears throat> calendars. I bought this from an artist down in Mississippi. Her name is April Corbett, and she has a little shop called upstate Mississippi. I can link to her 
Instagram or her website below. But I, I, I like to buy her, her handmade journals because she uses really nice paper. And she collaborated with um, another artist and they, they splotched paint on, on some of these journals and then they sold them. And so she only does like small batches of stuff. And then, so now I'm just starting my 2024 calendar. And in November, I went to go see my mom who lives in Golden. And um, I went to the Mineral Museum on the Colorado School of Mines campus. And I didn't know that this thing existed. And this is the Miss Colorado crown. And it has all the symbology of what the different... Um, gems are and stuff and it, it was so pretty it had really nice lights on it um and i like jewels so i thought that was fun and my brother went to mines for a while so another family connection um so let's see so i decided to do like two months so i did january and then i did february so february is ready for me and then i skipped so that i could put other stuff in between and I just, I kind of need the freedom to just doodle and write and stuff. Um, having a structured calendar is is nice, but I'm finding that I kind of, I need it to be a little more loose and free form. And I'm, I'm literally drawing each day with a template like this. And I, uh, I copied one of April's past calendars that I've bought before and it's kind of a nice zen relaxing thing for me and I feel very intentional making this journal and calendar um so here's April which is in progress so I'm not finished drying all of that out and then I'll have um I put some this will be the blank in between and I did this little puzzly doodly thing um, yesterday. So I'm going to tape that in there. Just having fun drawing and stuff. Anyway, so that's my 2024 calendar. Yeah. Anyway, so here's my kit with my, for my calendar. I've got stickers. I bought an Erin Condon calendar last year and it's gorgeous. And it, but it's huge. And I, I ended up not using everything that was in it. So I'm using the stickers now, but look how fun. Look at all this. Well, that's blank paper. Oh my God. I love stuff like this. So this is what I'm putting in my 2024 calendar. And if I don't use it up, I'll use some for 2025. So anyway, I still like stickers. That little girl in me loves to stick stuff on paper. I still love to paint and draw on everything and doodle and let myself be messy. Um, but I really liked, I liked that calendar because it was really gorgeous with the rainbow colors. And let me show it to you actually. Um, if any of you have heard of Etta V, she, I can't seem to get that to work right now. Um, I found her on Instagram. She's a, she paints really pretty colorful things. So this was the Erin Condon journal that I got last year. So that's an Etta V artwork. Gorgeous, right? Really nice cover. All these really, you know, the tabs for all the, the months and stuff. So all those stickers and everything came in with with this, um, they called it a life planner. And I was in school at the time and I really needed to have like um, the ability to see a month. I, I love seeing a month, the month spread. Like that's kind of my, I just have to have that. And then after that, they had all these extra little places you could write stuff. And everything was color coordinated. So January was, or September was purple. And then they just had, you know, by the week. And then I would use that for assignments so that I could keep track of what, what I needed to do on a certain day. 
yeah. So anyway, I love this, but I didn't want to do another. I mean, I just I couldn't even really carry this around. I felt like it was too bulky, but um, beautiful. I still love it. Excuse me. Oh, well, this is what I was going to show you. Okay. So I'm getting serious about my travel stuff. So I've, uh, I've gone to Europe twice. I haven't done a lot of artwork around it. And my friend, one of my dearest friends, the first time I went to Europe, she bought me this journal that's made by... Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't remember his name. His name's Jacob. But he buys old books. He'll tear them apart. And then he puts um, journal paper, blank paper. I bet he leaves some of the pages of the book inside of it, which is kind of cool. So you're not really getting the book, but just the flavor of the book. And then plenty of blank pages. So then what I did was I added my own watercolor paper and glued it in so then I could draw and paint when, when I was over there. And as you can see, I've got all kinds of stuff in there. And it's so fun to look back at this and, you know, I don't know, reminisce. And I did not write everything in chronological order for some reason. I don't know what I was doing at the time. Um, I've got just notes and scribbles, you know, and then I'd go somewhere. Oh my God. And I'd keep all the things, right? I like keep my museum passes and all my Metro passes. <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. And it is, it actually is, it, make, it makes me so happy to look back through this and go, oh, my God. And so then on that day, I did that. And I went and had at this tea shop, I had one of the most loveliest meals I've ever had. And I got to pick a beautiful tea. And I picked a lavender tea. And then I ended up buying some and brought it home. And I still savor it. I only have a little bit left. Um, but then... <clears throat> I would, you know, go around and then I'd draw and sketch later. I didn't really like doing it on site. Like, I know people like to be artistic in Paris, but I just didn't feel like sitting there and getting gawked at while I was being artistic. I don't know. For, I think just for me right now, it feels kind of like a private thing. And then I, I met um, a really nice person over there who was a friend of one of my friends, it was like a mutual friend. And she um, and her husband at the time uh, took me to this really nice restaurant. And she grew up in Paris and she still got lost. When trying to find this restaurant, she kept having to look at her phone and we had to figure out which direction we were standing. And it was, I, I thought it was great. That she, even people who live there their whole life still get lost because it's just, there's so many streets and stuff. Um, more doodles. I don't know why I have Downton Abbey on there, but I was thinking about that. Curry, double, double. Lovely time. Oh, we were turned away at Chez Manet. They wanted to take me to this really nice French restaurant, but we didn't have reservations. So I was disappointed, but they treated me then to a nice, uh, we went to um, Eastern Indian food and had curry and it was really good. Oh, and then I borrowed my friend Amanda's Nook. Nook, Nook, Nook. Thank you, Amanda. Lovely drinks, people in traffic. I got Ezra pencil and a pad. There were lights everywhere. And chatting Parisian voices. <laughs> yeah, nice. So anyway, this is my Europe uh, memoir. So that was my first trip. I went solo, right? Burp. And then the second time, we were going to go in March and April of 2020. 
Wah, wah. We had to cancel our trip because of COVID. So we had to wait three years. And then we got to go. And we did. And we went to um, England and we went to France. Again, because I really wanted, I wanted David, my, my partner in life, to experience France and Europe. So, And then I thought I could keep up doing this every day. No, I couldn't. I was living life, having fun, and I'd forget to doodle. But, okay, let me read you some of these funny <laughs> entries. So we went to London. My niece, Skylar, was living there at the time, and she was getting her master's at um, King's College. And it was great fun to meet her. And uh, we met up <clears throat> the first night we were there and we had drinks and stuff and got to eat. And um, a few days later, she took us on a tour of King's College, which is where I got this. Oh, I taped it in. Hang on a second. I thought this was so freaking adorable. <clears throat> so this artist is so good at like capturing the buildings and all the things around King's College and I don't know I just really like that I think we got one for my mom too a little postcard so she could have a little keepsake from London anyway so let me read this what did I write Heathrow Express nope we couldn't take it because there were train um strikes so they go on strike nobody goes anywhere so you got to figure it out so we took the elizabeth line to paddington station and then we walk walk walked to victoria park we thought we could go to victoria station and catch the train and we couldn't so what do we do we just sat and rested and we we were just enjoying this gorgeous park where prince albert I think was the one that made it so pretty for his wife, the queen, Queen Victoria back then. Um, it was really, it was lovely. Very relaxing in the middle of the city, beautiful fountain, kind of the nice little respite we needed to have a snack, figure out how the heck we were going to get to our hotel. Um, <laughs> so after we rested a little bit, this is really hilarious. You know, we had all our luggage and we packed light. So we were just carrying backpacks but still, um, you know, when you walk a long time with all that weight, you get really tired and, you know, I don't know, maybe we weren't in the best shape either. Um, so David decides, heck, let's just take a taxi because we thought maybe we'd take a bus. But then we saw this taxi and he just turns around and he goes, Edge, taxi, <laughs> run. <laughs> so I turn around and I run after him. He hailed a cab that was sitting at a red light. We jump into this car and <laughs> just tell him where we where we needed to go and how do we pay, you know? And it was brilliant because they had the card readers in the very uh, back where as the passengers you sit and you could just, you know, tap your card and pay for it immediately right there. And they had a night, they had a barrier, like a glass barrier. So there was like, you couldn't bother the driver, but he could hear you. Um, anyway, that was hilarious. So as we're driving down one of the busiest streets in London, it's where all the shopping happens. I can't even remember what the name of it is. Just gobs of people all over the place walking, you know, down the sidewalk. There's bicycles racing down the street you know, cutting into traffic and people are crossing the street in crazy ways. And it's just, it was madness, like absolute mayhem, double decker buses. I, I was just, I don't know. It was just hilarious to, to watch it. And it was really noisy and there was a lot of honking and there was a lot of yelling, you know? Um, and I was noticing people, as they were walking down the sidewalks and I, I don't know why I, but I noticed their shoes and I was noticing Nike, <laughs> like all these people were wearing Nikes, which I was like, I had no clue that Nikes were still so popular. Uh, but that made me think of high school. Cause that's what all of us used to wear was Nikes. Anyway, 
So, and also we were there right after King Charles's coronation. So there were coronation banners everywhere and, you know, posters up in the windows and there were uh, celebratory flowers and stuff. And it was, that was really fun to be a part of that. I mean, we didn't see the coronation, but um, yeah, it was really cool to have such a significant occurrence happen not too, you know, not too soon before we got there. So anyway, all that to say, all of these lovely things in here. So I want to spend time looking at this and writing blog posts, maybe sharing some of these you know, images, maybe I could scan them in so I don't have to recreate everything. Um, I don't know. That's what I wanted to share with you guys is um, what I'm thinking about doing. And um, I ended up doing this um, interesting thing where I, um, I, I, there's this girl named Oh, I forgot her last name. Her name's Jacqueline. She's the product boss. And she has like all this content, like a year of content. And I bought it for like, I don't know, $20 or something. Anyway, she has it all organized where um, there are, you know, like days of the, the month, like nationals, whatever day, national chocolate cake day. And I was looking at some of those and going, oh, I think I'm going to pick National Cheese Day because cheese in Europe was delicious and we were always looking for it. It might be fun to do something around National Cheese Day and highlight a cheese memory from Europe. And then I thought it would be fun to do a poll, maybe what kind of cheese do people like, like do an Instagram poll or what's your favorite cheese, just kind of leave it open. I don't want to try to guess what people like, um, that kind of thing, just to create more like meaningful content around what I'm interested in creating and not feel like I have to chase, you know, everything. Um, one of the reasons I didn't post very much last year was because I just felt like I can't keep up with, you know, all of these platforms and how do I do this? And um, I just decided I didn't need to. But now that I went a year without really reaching out, I did like one, two newsletters last year. I realized that's not what I want to keep doing. I want, you know, I want to do this. I want to talk to you guys. I want to hear what your thoughts and what are you guys working on? And, you know, what do you think about stuff? And what would you be interested in me talking about in the future, you know? Um, just to have more of a connection with you guys and maybe make some new friends out there too. So, um, yeah, so I'm going through my list faster than I thought I would. Um, oh, I showed you that already. Okay. Here's another thing I'm working on. <laughs> I got all over the place, right? Okay. I had... I got some spoon flower wallpaper samples and I got the peel and stick stuff and I can't believe how nice it is. Sorry for the noise here. And I'm trying to figure out what to do with this. I was like, would I cover a book with this? What would I do with this stuff? You guys have any ideas? Look how nice this is. Let's show you the texture. You see the texture on that? Not really. Looks really blue. Anyway, it's textured a little bit. It's got like, it almost looks like really nice canvas. And then it just it just peels so freaking easy. You just like that. It just peels off. And then I pick I picked these three colors just because they're polka dots and I like. All my Broncos, and then here's my Seahawks stuff, and I like, I've always liked green and orange together. I don't know why, but um, those are going to sit here and be something awesome. I don't know what. Um, yeah. And then what's next? Oh, I don't know. Um, I went through all my whole <laughs> 
Okay, let me show you some. Uh, how about I do a Paris? Let me go back to this and I'll show you a Paris um, memory. I didn't I actually have it done Paris yet. I only got to like the 14th of May. Um, so I'm way behind on this. So that's the other thing is I have to go through all of this train tickets, all the receipts. Oh my God. Has anybody ever eaten clotted cream? Oh my God. It's amazing. Oh, and we went to, that was amazing. So many, so many good memories. I mean, there wasn't a bad day. It wasn't even a bad moment. You know, when you're traveling and you're kind of in the mint, the moment, um, you, you know, you kind of just go with it. And I think we use just about every mode of transportation except for bicycles or motorcycles. I mean, we took trains, we took buses, planes, we took a ship across the channel. Um, I don't recommend trying to get to pool to go to France. I would pick a different place. That's a whole other story. We stayed at this pretty bed and breakfast in the country, in England. Really nice people. That's called the Roll Stone Manor in Wiltshire. You were in Wiltshire. Yeah, that was fun. My niece met us there for a couple days. We had a really cute Airbnb. That was fun. Really nice. So, okay, let me pick, <laughs> let me pick a Paris memory. So many. Oh. We went to the Musée de, de la de Via Romantique, the Romantic Museum. And they were having this show with this artist. And her figure work was really good. Um, what a pretty little house. It was somebody's um, studio. I don't know if there's a picture of the house in here. Nope, there's not. Yeah, anyway, that was fun. And then, of course, all the French on the back, but I don't know what it is. Again, I like foreign languages. Oh, yeah, so, okay, Irish calendar, learning Irish. And then I decided I wanted to put French, German, and Spanish on each of my months, which is... This is really messy, but this is January. And then I had, so then I had to go and look all of that up, right? So here's Irish, French, no. See, I can't even remember. <laughs> one of them's German, one of them's Spanish, one of them's French. I have to look it up. I can't remember. Anyway. Don't be like me. Okay. Oh, David found this chocolate museum. It had the whole history of of how they made used to make chocolate. There were old molds and presses, um, and you could even watch them make the chocolate like in the kitchen, like that. At the moment when we went through, we were the only people in there. They weren't making chocolate. They were packaging the chocolate. And they all looked at us like. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to stare at you through the window anymore. Um, and then you got to pick like they gave you. There was like this huge wall of. Oh, I don't know. Palette stuff like flavors. And so you had to pick. You'd say you'd pick this like sweet or not sweet. And then it would take you to the next bracket and then you'd pick the next thing. And so you're working your way down this wall to the chocolate that is perfect for you. And then you push this button when you get to the bottom and then you get a little sample. And one of these is David's and one of these is mine. 
and I can't remember which one I had. And I didn't like it. It wasn't sweet enough. I think I got the 70% dark. So that's really, you know, not a lot of chocolate. And I like, I like me, a, I like dark chocolate, but I also really, you know, like milk chocolate too. But the chocolate was really delicious. And they were really, um, the way that they harvest the, and get the chocolate, they, they are all about art, artisanal and um, um, well, I don't know. Um, what am I trying to say? You know, small farm, sustainable uh, ways of getting the chocolate. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I wish I could see your guys' questions. Um, I feel like I don't have anything else to share with you. Um, so I might just call it call it an evening. Thank you for joining me. Um, I will have this up on my YouTube. And um, yeah, shoot me comments or other ideas if you'd like me to uh, talk about other stuff. I think one of the other things I might do is see that bookshelf behind me. I have very nice books that I have been ignoring and I think it would be fun to just pick one and just talk about it. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for being here.